Hey, what is up, y'all? Welcome to Solo Game Day here at Heavy Cardboard. Teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18xx. I am your host, Edward Euler. Happy to be joined by y'all since today we are doing a solo playthrough of Tekenu, Obelisk of the Sun. I keep wanting to call it in the sun. My bad. Sorry, Rainer. I apologize. So welcome, everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. All right. So, like I said, Takenu, Obelisk of the Sun, and uh, designed by Danielle Tassini, published, and, uh, and David Turtsy, and the solo designed by David Turtsy. And uh, that's what we're going to be enjoying today, published by Borden Dice. Borden Dice also kindly provided us with this preview copy, review copy, whatever it is you want to call it, as well as sponsored to play through. So thanks to Rainer, Kuba, Air Iraq, uh, Philip, everybody over at Borden Dice for the support, as well as the partnership and the game. So lastly, big thanks. To all the patrons who help support the show and make all of this possible for the rest of y'all. So big thank you to all of them. Like, subscribe, pledgehc.com if you want to support the show, all of those things. All right, so today it's a solo playthrough. I am not going to teach the game uh, like we did last week. Rainer did an amazing job when we had our three-player game of this last week. So if you want a detailed how to play, I would recommend going and watching that video. Just find it last week. It was one of the most recent live streams we did. However, I am going to step us through. So it's going to sort of be a teach as I go type thing. It's just not going to be uh, all encompassing like it was last week. Also, I will be teaching the solo bot, but I'm going to be doing that as we go along as well. So I'm going to give a very brief overview and then we're going to get started into the game. So if y'all are ready, I'm ready. I know that uh, Rainer is in chat with us today from Board and Dice, so thanks buddy. I appreciate that. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Takenu, shall we? All right, there we go. That's, that's Takenu. But let's go ahead and give you guys the theme of the game here first. In Takenu, Obelisk of the Sun, players take on the roles of nobles in ancient Egypt as they, both, or as they build both the Temple of Amun-Ra and the area that it is to become, Ipet Itsut. On their turn, they will choose a die that is the base of the obelisk. Then... Then they can choose to perform a specific god's action based on the die's location around the obelisk. Produce resources based on the die's color or alter the die and the action with the scribe. As the obelisk shadow changes position as that moves around there, different die colors will become pure, tainted, or forbidden, changing how the die will sit on the player's scales when the time comes for Mott's judgment. There are four Mott phases and two scoring phases during the course of the game. While Mott phases only take into account the player's balance on their scales to determine player order and any points lost due to excessive taint, scoring phases will require that they pay for their buildings they have built and provide victory points for the various gods, god actions that they have taken. Well, hell, that kind of did the overview for me, didn't? All right. All right. So what is it we're going to be doing? I'm not going to go over everything you're looking at. Just know, victory point track, round the outside, round the outside, round the outside. I'm playing orange. The bot is playing purple. The bot does not have their own player board. It is simply a nuisance <laughs> and will also be scoring that we are going to try and beat. The goal of the game for us is to score more victory points than the bot. And the technical, the full name of the bot is 
Oh boy. Uh, Botakamen. Botakamen. Go with it. The bot. There we go. All right. So on our turn, basically, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to take a die, either a pure or a tainted, to either perform the god action associated with that section that the die was taken from or produce resources. Or we can pay two scribes to do an Anubis action. There you go. So we're going to take a die. We're going to perform the associated action with it and carry out those actions. Easy enough. All right. So without further ado, honestly, let's get into the game, shall we? I think that's a big enough overview. Let's bring that up. Oh, what is this? You might be asking. Well, this is, this is how the bot is going to choose their actions. All right. So there's that. All right. We have randomly determined, not really, the bot always goes first at the beginning of the game, okay? You know what? I just realized I am not super thrilled with that. Give me just a second, y'all. I am a lot happier with that now. Okay, that's better. All right, cool. Yeah, it's, it's King Bot, if you will. I'm just, you're never going to hear me try and pronounce that again. It's the bot. All right, let's go. So here we go. We need to talk about this aspect of it first, which is what is going to be controlling uh, the bot's action. So let's take a look at that first and foremost, okay? All right. There is a, a progress marker as well as the 10 various uh, tiles that the bot is going to use to determine their actions. The progress marker will always start over here, and then depending on, we're going to flip this like a coin, okay? If it lands on, and that is technically called the Debon token, all right? If the Debon token lands on the, or first off, if the progress marker is off, it will automatically go to that action. If it's already on the board, if you will. It's on one of these sections. We're going to flip this. If it ends up on this one, it's going to do exactly what it says. It's going to go up and to the right. So it would go to that one. However, if the Debon token ends up on the tail side, it will move over to the right and carry out that action. So every time before the, uh, the bot takes its action, other than the first time every... Uh, during every, between, the beginning of a new mop phase, the beginning of a new phase, if you will. Uh, the first one, we don't need to flip it. It's just going to go to this. And then after that, we will carry that out. Now, these were randomly put out here and they're going to randomly uh, change after every mop phase as well. All right. Yes, and Rainer, thank you for that. We strive to make the pronunciation as difficult for Edward as possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I appreciate it. I, I get humor out of that. So I'm sure everybody else does. All right. So, uh, there is one other thing before we get started. All right. Uh, I have to actually get my starting resources and we have to do all of those things. All right. So first things first, let me go ahead and bring up the other camera. All right. So let's bring this over. Now I have two end game cards. I don't know what these are, so let's see. And I'm going to choose one of these. So, gain three points per technology card I have at the end of the game. Okay. Or, gain four points per unique decree symbol, including this one. Well, okay. Huh. 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 I want to go for that one, but here's the thing. If you take a look, the bot starts with a statue already built wherever the, uh, the number one die or uh, whatever god tile is shown up there in the corner. Now, just like in Teotihuacan, uh, these can be changed. And I decided, you know what, let's go and randomize that since you guys saw the standard ones printed on the board for the multiplayer game, let's change those up. So the game actually started with a statue built there 
and the game also starts with a pillar in the center area as well. So that means every time I take this action, the bot is going to score or is going to uh, get the benefit of that, which means it's going to gain either population or scribes. I'm sorry, uh, faith. Yeah. Well, you know what? Even so, I'm going to stick with the technologies right there. All right. So I'm going to get rid of that one and I'm going to keep that. So at the end of the game, I'm going to score three points per technology there. All right. Now, the other thing that I need to uh, do is I need to choose two of the three available cards down here. All right. So I apologize for having all this stuff on camera here, but I need to make it usable. So what do we have here? Um, so, <coughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry about that, guys. Give me just a second. That first one, I need to actually look that up. Okay, that is starting card number four. That is uh, gain five resources, excluding gold. Well, that's kind of nice. I get to choose two of these. The second one here is I get to draw two blessing cards from the top of the deck, select to keep one, and put the other one back into the deck. And this is one resource, as you see there, one limestone, one granite, one papyrus, and one bread. I'm not going to lie. If I were to get both of these, that's a ton of starting resources. And it's a random blessing. So I really want that blessing. What did I say? Three per tech? Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, all right. Okay, fair enough, Rainer. Um, I really want a blessing. Is it worth four resources, though? I don't think so. So, you know what? I'm going to discard this one out of the game, and I'm going to go ahead and choose those. So now, let's go ahead and get my stuff here. So it's going to be one papyrus, one granite, one limestone, and one bread to start. Well, I know we're going to want a bunch of papyrus, so let's go ahead and get two more papyrus of the five there. So there's that. So I have three more. Um, that started in the shaded. That's not terrible. If I were to build, yeah, I think I could do that. So let's go ahead and get one more limestone and two more limestone. And last but not least, I think two bread is a good starting. So there we go. Here are our starting resources that I've chosen between all of that. Okay. Thanks. I appreciate that on the haircut. It feels much better. And yes, the orange for the orange is not a coincidence. So there we go. So let me go ahead and I start with a scribe and a gold just like normal as well. So I'll just try and keep this somewhat organized for you guys. We'll separate the, we got, so we have two bread, one uh, granite, three papyrus, and three limestone. That seems like a really, really good start uh, at the beginning of the game. Now, the first player chooses uh, their uh, starting. So I need to, let's see, he will always choose, let me double check. He chooses randomly either gold or the scribe destiny. So in other words, he will choose one of those random, oh, you guys can't see that. Let's try that again. He will choose one of these two randomly. I do have a die that is removed from the game. So uh, we'll do uh, even and odd. Even. So he's choosing that one. Okay. So that one I cannot choose. Um, let's go ahead and get a gold. So that's what I will choose. More resources. That seems like a good idea. So I'm going to go ahead and move that up there. And done. Now, the game, I should say that the bot... Uh, the, uh, the bot will never, let's see, the, uh, will never, total brain cramp, I apologize. There, 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 
Got it. Okay. They'll never uh, produce. They will never have to pay and they will never gain resources or faith. They will only gain scribes as the game goes along. So all of the resources that are here, the only thing that they will ever gain are points essentially and scribes as well as putting out their markers out on the board. Now the bot starts with a statue associated with the value one die and one other thing I do want to point out is anywhere you see these black discs, those are actually from uh, ground floor. They are not a part of this game. I just put them on there because the game is set up for the solo slash two player game and I didn't want to screw that up throughout the course of gameplay. So anything that is unavailable in the two player game and the solo game, I've marked off with the black discs. Also, the game also starts with two buildings already built on those two locations. And last but not least, if you're a masochist and you wanna make it harder, the game can start with a building uh, built in honor of whatever is the god on the fourth one which there would be raw. So could have, but you know what? Let's not go with that. All right, so without further ado, we have now officially gotten ready and now we can start. Okay, let me grab that back. Should be okay now. All right, so I'm just gonna put, eh, yeah, we're gonna live with it in front of us. That'll work, that's fine. Okay. All right, so place your bets for, hold on, yeah. Place your bets, first and foremost. Me or the bot. I might could, I did all right in, in our playthrough last week, so it's not an auto win for the bot, number one. Number two, three and a half glory to realms. So there you go, me or the bot and over under on the glory to realms, okay? And I saw this just come through. So, awesome. This is a good start to the stream. There we go. Raymond, cheers. Thank you for the support. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, good tea. All right. So. Let's get into it, shall we? So the bot is going to take their first action. So it's going to go on to, and you know what? I don't have the pictures memorized. I think that's Bastet. So the game is going to take the Bastet action, okay? So now let's take a look at the Bastet. All right. So the first things first is they're going to choose the highest value die in that area that is available. It just so happens in this case, there is only one die available, okay? Hey, Jeremy, what's up? All right, so because these two dice are now unavailable given where uh, the setup started, it can only choose this die, so that makes it really, really easy, all right? Now, for the Bastet action, it's going to coincide with all of this. Now, again, the game will never have to pay resources, all right, so we can just skip this, okay? So he's going to get happiness based on the number of pips. So here, the, uh, the purple is obviously the bad player or the bot player, so he's going to get five. One, two, three, but your happiness can never exceed your population. If at any point, though, your happiness marker would advance beyond the population marker, he advances his population marker instead. So that was three, that's four, that's five. Or I guess you could make the argument that would be three, four, and that'd be five. I think that's more what it would be, okay? Then he would gain scribes, because remember that is the only resource, not really a resource, but you get the idea, um, chit that it gets and it does not get any. So that five is now spent and there we go. Okay, easy enough. Now it's our turn. I have not studied this at all, but we do know that we need, we, uh, a bunch of technologies would be good. All right, now notice there are only three purity dice around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Uh, and the game will always, 
if it gets onto any of these resource spaces, the bots, then it will always choose uh, purity before um, tainted dice, okay? All right, so, okay, so what do we want to do? So we know that the game is going to choose one of these two, right? He's either going to choose uh, Hathor or that one is Horus. So gonna choose either of these two actions, right? Building over here or over there. Well, one of the things that I was kind of hoping to do was building a statue, but I know I, I'm lying. That wasn't what I was going to do. It was to come up here and build a pillar or to build a building down here or get these. So let's see. You know what? I hear technologies are good to get early, especially if you're getting three victory points per at the beginning of the game, or at the end of the game, I mean. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take the Thoth action. All right. So let's take a look down here. Now, my happiness marker is in the beige area, which means I can only choose within this bracket of cards. If I get my happiness marker up to the red, which remember it can match but can never exceed, then I can choose within this bracket. So now, if, if there were dice available here in the Bastet action, I would actually do that to boost up my happiness so that I would have a better choice because I really like some of these cards up here. Alas, that is not going to be the case. If I pay two Papyrus, I would be able to get two of these three and I would have to take a three or four value die. You know, what if I were to, ch uh, I did mention wanting to get technologies, but I kind of want to get these two technologies, right? So I think what I do is I'm definitely going to take this one and then immediately, uh, you cannot use them on the turn you got them, so check that. Um, but I can use it next turn, so it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to take that one. The question is, do I want that first one? It's just basically I'm spending two papyrus to get three gold whenever I... Is it worth it? Because then I would only be able to have... No. All right, so what I've decided is I'm going to go ahead and take this black two die, which means I'm only going to take one of these. So now let's go ahead and briefly talk about me taking this from the tainted area, what this matters. From the tainted area, it's going to go over onto the tainted side of my balance. And why this matters is going to be at the end of the uh, map phase, when we have a map phase, which is going to be after four dice are selected, then we're going to check my balance between purity and taint. And uh, I'm okay with it being two on the tainted side. You want it as balanced next turn. Ah! Okay, so let's look. If I were to take these two on the first turn, that means I can only take one of these on the next turn, which means I would be taking that one. All right, I'll listen to Shrey. Fine, 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 fine. I will take... All right. I will take the higher value because there are a bunch of, eh, there's really not. I'm actually going to take the three, put it over on the tainted side. I will spend two papyrus for doing that. And then I will choose these two cards here. Fine. And that's going to be worth three points there. All right. So I will put those there. Then we immediately refill a uh, blessing and a technology. So the technology there is whenever you take a pure die, gain a point. 
Well, that's nice. And the blessing says, uh, whenever taking a die, spend one scribe, and you also get an adjacent God action. So you get multiple actions, all right? Oh, I do have gold. I forgot I have gold. All right. My bad, my bad, I forgot. All right. All right, now, that is the end of my action. However, you notice that the game, the bot, has a statue built there. All right, now the statues, how they work in a solo game is instead of, in the three-player game, whenever you place this, you immediately got the benefit, right? And then whenever another player takes that action, you get whatever the benefit is. In the solo game, you don't get the immediate benefit. However, you do get the benefit whenever you or your opponent takes that action, all right? So, here we go. Now, uh, the, the bot receives a bonus for the, uh, based on this chart that's in the rule book here, based on the position of the Horus bonus tile, all right? Uh, so the Horus bonus tile is marked, let's see, oh, give me one second. He's either going to get a scribe or a victory point, and because the Horus is on the three, he's going to get uh, a victory point. So, every time I take the Thoth action, he's going to, uh... Okay, he's going to get a victory point for doing that, or for me, for any of us doing that. So he gets one point for that, boom, done. All right, so now we need to flip this. And this is gonna be a mess. I'm gonna try and put it down here, but we'll see how it goes, okay? All right. All right. So that's the side it ended on. So he's going to come up here and take the Horus action. All right, so the Horus action, okay. So he's going to choose the highest value die. Kushigra, uh, go bot, go boo, boo, boo this man, boo. All right, all right, so he's taking, uh, as I said, the uh, Horus action, right? All right, so always we'll take the highest value die as possible. So the highest value die, there's only one available die, which is going to be the six, all right? And the six, if a corresponding statue space is already occupied, it is not. So the game is going to build one here for Osiris. That spot is available. So going to build one there, does not get the immediate benefit. The six will go away. And we're just going to put that right there just to signify that it took the six there. All right. Did I? Oh, you know what? It's where the body is. I apologize. He shouldn't have gotten the point. He should have gotten a scribe for that. You are correct, Rainer. Thank you. Um, because Thoth is up here, therefore gets a scribe. That's, that's my bad. My bad. Yep. It's not based on a die, the area you took it, meaning right here. So, yeah. Good call. All right. So, now, on my second action, to the surprise... Oh, wait. Hold on. Hmm... Hold on one second. Yeah, okay. Uh, there really aren't a lot by way of purity dice left right now. Um, 
there are only right now, well, but that's about to change once things rotate. Yellow and brown, there aren't any there. Yellow and brown, there. So that will move up here. And for my two bread, I will plant on the six there. If I go, f I will be going second. He will be taking a purity or a yellow die next. I'm sorry, a uh, black die. Okay, I think I'm safe with this. Yeah, I think I'm gonna actually take that action again. All right, so I'm going to pay two uh, parchment. So I will take the, so it's going to be one parchment and one gold for doing that because I'm going to be taking the four tainted die here, which now gives me seven on the tainted side, but that's okay, all right? And, no, whoa, 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 before I do that, I'm going to discard this card, which says gain three population or three happiness, so it's a one-time use, this blessing, so I will go one, two, three, and now I can take from the red area, phew, almost messed that up. And for the red area, because I paid, or because I uh, took the four value die, I'm going to go ahead, I think, and take both of those. I know I'm taking this one because now I can treat forbidden dice as if they were pure or tainted. The flexibility of that is going to be amazing. All right. So this I'm definitely taking. And it's worth three points. A population and a happiness to take an extra action. Or, you know what, I'm going to keep getting technology cards, so this just makes sense to go ahead and take that. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take this one as well. So that's going to go there. Okay. Now we need to put out two more technologies. So off the top, we have one, which says whenever you perform the Thoth, got action, gain a papyrus. Wow, that, that's nice. Okay. And use gold and scribes interchangeably. If you do, once per turn, gain a victory point, regardless of how many times you use that. Okay. All right. Cool. Good. All right. So that is now two actions each. So therefore, now we are going to rotate. All right. So let me go through the steps of this. I want to make sure I don't mess any of this up. So, all right, the obelisk rotates. Okay. So we have, and I will show you guys this. We have the little arrow right here. So that is going to rotate one section there. Then each of the areas that now just became shaded, meaning up here in Hathor and down here in Osiris, those are going to get additional dice, okay? And it's going to be two dice each. And the reason is because it's set up for the two-player game. So there you go, okay? So... All right, so we'll start over here. So we have, that's going to be a pure die. And the order of these, where they are, based on the chart over here, whether they are pure or whether they are tainted. So those two will be uh, pure, and then everything else ends up tainted. Gray dice will always be, and uh, in the two new areas, those will always, uh, all the dice will be available. So then we will do the Osiris area. There we go. All right. So, kind of doing this out of order. So let's go ahead and start up north, up here, okay? So black dice are going to be pure. So that will come up there. And then uh, tainted dice will be gray and brown and white will become unavailable for the bot, but not for yours truly. 
we've already done that section. So here we then look and brown are still unavailable because that didn't actually change. And this one actually becomes unavailable there. Then over here, we have brown and yellow, like so, and that will be there. And then again, over here, these will be unavailable because that didn't change. And the top one I already did, so boom, we are done. All right. Yes, I did forget to give the bot another scribe for taking where their statue is. Good call there, Ra. Apparently, Ra is definitely, uh, definitely pulling for the bot. But no, I'm trying to play it right. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. After two more dice now, uh, there will be a mot phase, okay? Which I will explain when we get into it. But as it is, now the game will uh, go and take its action. So here we go. We will flip this. All right. Moving on up. So now I'm just going to put it up here so you guys can see that. There are four symbols on that, the four resources. What this is, is it's going to take the highest value pure or tainted die corresponding to whatever the first resource is. Now you'll notice that there are four resource tiles out there like that, and each corresponds to a different color die. And of course there are no gray, but I digress. So that's going to be the highest value black die that is on the board. Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look. Highest value die, black die. So it's going to be a two there, a three there, and that's unavailable. So it's going to take the three. So therefore he's going to take an Osiris action. Okay. If he were tied, he would take it, um, Yeah, he would take it from wherever he has a statue, so he gets the bonus first. If still tied, then it, uh, whatever the highest value Horus bonus would be. So, based on the value or the location, there it is. So, as it is, he's going to take the black three. So, here we go. Going to take the Osiris action. You guys are terrible, team bot. I don't know how you sleep at night. Sheesh. All right. So, does not, the bot does not suffer any happiness for a uh, loss for that. So this three die, I'm just going to go ahead and put it over there. There we go. All right. So then the value of the die determines the row. So that is going to be a three. So it's going to be in that row. And then uh, the color of the die determines what it's going to be. It was a black die. So he's going to build a building or technically a quarry right there. Okay. If it were already occupied, we'll get into that if that happens. Okay. All right. Done. Easy enough. And again, he doesn't care about this because he doesn't have tracks and he doesn't care about resources other than scribes and victory points, which technically are not resources, but I digress. All right. My turn. Well, what do we have? We have three limestone and a granite, and we have two bread. Now, I was thinking about coming over here and uh, building, I think that's what we're going to do. We're gonna build a building out on one of the outer areas for the simple fact that we're going to get a huge bump in population. I think so. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and take the uh, Hathor action, which is up yonder. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So I will go ahead and choose. I have seven. So that limits me. So before I choose which the six or the five that I want, because again, I have seven on the other side, I'm looking at how to balance this, right? Well, if I'm going to put it on a two, that means I'm going to get, I'm probably going to go here, which will get me a papyrus, a bread, uh, 
and a faith. So there are twos and threes, but the six bump in population, one, two, three, four, five, six, is really not a lot different than the five. And the five would allow me to go a two or a three. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and take the five here, put it over on the purity side, so now I have a difference of two. So, okay, that's not bad. All right, so let's go through this. I'm going to need to pay some amount of bread for the building I'm about to build. All right, so I need to pay two bread, which I have right here. I could pay a gold, but I'm going to need that gold for a little bit later uh, to be able to pay upkeep for the building I'm going to build. So I'm going to take the lowest building. I'm going to need to pay one bread during upkeep. And like I said, I think I'm going to go right here. So then I'm going to get one of everything that is in this row, regardless of how many are shown. Ignore the last two on this, but I'm going to get a papyrus, a bread, and one faith. So I got the faith, a papyrus, oh, and the gold, and the bread. So actually it saves me having to use the gold. Nice. All right, so I did that. Then I would score three points if I had any pillars already built here in that row or column. Obviously, I do not. And then I'm going to get whatever the population is of the value of the die that I just took. Well, I took a five value die, so I'm going to get one, two, three, four, and five population. Now that can go up. Now, when I do that, you'll notice that my uh, population marker is now in the green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put out these cards here because those are now available for me to choose if I get my happiness up, all right? So let's go ahead. We're going to get one blessing. When producing resources, you get limestone, four limestone. And again, this is a one-time use. Then we have technology cards. Uh, whenever you perform a God action, this is as if you used a scribe as a plus or minus two, up to two. So that's kind of nice. Shrey had this in our last game. Then here, using limestone and granite interchangeably, and if you do, you gain a victory point, which is much like this for scribes and gold over here. And we have our first decree. Now this decree is an endgame scoring card. You're allowed to score up to three of these as long as they have different symbols up here at the top. Now mine has a statue like with a hat on it, so not this one, so conceivably I could use this. Gain three victory points per quarry, meaning a building in limestone or granite area over there. Honestly, those are kinda meh. So okay, whatever. All right. All right. So that was my third action. Now the bot is going to take their fourth action. Okay, so here we go. And climbing on up. So that means they are going to take the Thoth action in theory. Hey Martha, so landed there, so would come up there to the Thoth action. Well you notice there are no dice available there in the Thoth action. There is only one unavailable die. All right. Uh, if no dice exist or they are all forbidden, in that case, move to the next section counterclockwise until a possible choice can be made. So in other words, we're going to move over to the Osiris action. All right. So he's going to take an Osiris action. So... Uh, highest value die available in Osiris is going to be a five tainted, as you can see there. So they will take this one. Uh, we'll just go ahead and put that up there. And with it being the Osiris action, just like what we did, that was a five and it was white. So they're going to go ahead and build that. And they get Let's see, this is Osiris, this is a six. This is the second time they've taken that act. Uh, not, I believe it was only the first. They, because they have a statue and because 
Osiris is in the sixth position, he's going to get a scribe and a victory point. And I will show you guys why they get a scribe. Did I say counterclockwise? Hold on. Counterclockwise. Oy vey. All right, that one comes back. Never mind. My bad. I'm my bad. There. Given that, that comes back. Ka. Jeez. Counterclockwise. Nope. Keep moving. Yup. And now he's going to take that six. Damn him. So, as I said, he's taking the Hathor action. I don't know. Yeah. Clocks move backwards here in Wakefield. My bad. One thing I wanted to show you guys also was this. So, this is the chart that I'm going off of for the Horus bonus, even though I, I, I screwed that up, mind you. But whenever they have a statue, they're going to get whatever these are based on where they're, uh, the god, the statue is located, associated with those gods. Okay? All right. Cool. All right. My bad. My bad. My bad. All right. So, coming over here to the Hathor action. All right? All right, whatever is going to gain them the most victory points from pillars is how they're going to do this. So, first things first, they're going to take the highest value die. That's a six. That kind of sucks for me. Okay, so then he doesn't have to pay any amount of bread. He doesn't get any resources. He's going to score three points for each of his pillars in that area, okay? So as it is, let me go through this. And if tied, pick randomly. So a building over here will be, I mean, it's going to be either this one or this one. And if tied, pick randomly. So let's go ahead and roll. And we will say, uh, that's odd, that's even. That's odd. So they're going to get three points for that. Three points, and he's going to gain five population. One, two, three, four, and five. And notice, he now reached the purple area. So therefore, we're gonna go ahead and put out more cards. So blessing when producing, you actually produce, you take two individual actions. Nice, okay. The technology is whenever playing a blessing. So whenever you play one of these white cards, you gain a gold, okay. Decree, score, gain a number of victory points equal to half the total value of your pure dice rounded up at the end of the game. So if you have a ton of pure dice, you could score up to 12 points. All right, nice. And this one says, before final scoring, perform any one action as if the die had any value and without paying the cost for that action. So it's basically a bonus end game action, but that's your scoring, if you will. Really? One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know why I thought five. I think because I just took the five from there. Yep. All right. All right. So the bot now has taken their last action before the mop phase. So now it's up to me. All of the dice are, are my oyster at this point. So ideally, I would like either a... Well, I can take a one, two, or three to be able to equal this out because I have one faith. So any one through three. Huh. We have three limestone, a papyrus, a bread, a gold, and a marble. Granite, sorry. Uh, I 
could, for free, take that. It would give him another scribe, I realize, but it would give me uh, two points. And then, every time I take a pure die, that's kind of tempting. Um, you know what? Let's lean into it heavy. I realize I'm giving him a scribe, but I think so, right? Yeah, let's do it. So I'm going to take this two uh, unavailable, but because I have the uh, forbidden dice as either pure or tainted, I will take it as a pure. So now we're at 7-7. Seven, seven. Excellent. And I'm taking the Thoth action, so I'm going to gain two victory points, and I will... Okay. Oh, you guys. Ooh. Huh. Okay. You guys can see that. All right. Let's see. So there's that. I gain two points whenever I take a Thoth action. And there. You know what? How about I just line them up here? There we go. And treat any die. Uh, any forbidden die is pure or tainted. So, excellent. Okay. So, taking the Thoth action. And because that was a two-value die, I'm going to be able to take one for free. And let's go ahead and take this. So, it says whenever you take a pure die, gain a victory point. Which, for me, means forbidden die that I treated as a pure die also would count, I believe. So, that would be one point. So, yeah. That'll work. And that's going to be 12 points for that. Okay, and we'll have a new technology that comes out. When you perform an action using a die value of one, gain two victory points. Okay. Okay. All right. So that is now the end of the first mop phase. Okay, so let's go ahead and run through the end of the mop phase. Okay. So if all players have four dice on their boards, and uh, we do, well, I do, and four up here, right? Then determine the balance of your scales. Okay. Seven to seven. That'd be perfect. And uh, the game, let me get this for the mop phase for the bot here. During the mop phase, uh, the bot has a fixed value balance that you must beat in order to become first in turn order. So the first mop phase, the bot has a plus three. So we beat that. So technically we didn't have to end up perfect. We could have ended up anywhere in that area and that would have been fine, but all right, there we go. All right, the bot's onk value is always going to be four when we get to that, okay? so. Now, any faith tokens that are used or unused, it doesn't matter that you have, go away. So that faith token goes away, okay? If I had any excessive taint, then I would lose victory points based on that. So a new player order is going to be me first, the bot second. Uh, clear the scales, return faith tokens. Return any uh, destiny cards. So in other words, um, these come back. There we go. And then rotate and add dice. The end. Okay. So we're going to rotate. We need to, before we add any dice, we need to actually take all of the dice here that were used. Go back into the bag. And one more thing. And then we have to shuffle all the bot action tiles and put them back out. And there we go. All right, so we will reset this right there. And I will shuffle these up. And then I will do the dice, all right? Hey, what's up, Rocky? There 
There. It's a pretty mediocre shuffle, honestly, but that's all right. Oop. I do not promise that these end up straight at this point. Didn't have time, or uh, I'm not going to take the time like I did in the uh, pre-setup. So are you guys following along? Is it all making sense so far? All right, here we go. So we have shuffled those up. Okay. Hey, Spain in the house. What's up, Miguel? All right, so now into the newly shaded areas, meaning here, then there. So we'll start with Bastet. Okay, so it's going to be two. We'll go there, and then two for Horus. So one too many. No, I think that's right. And then there. So now the raw area didn't change, but over here, you'll notice that white is forbidden and these two stay in the middle or in the tainted. Then here, these are, let's see, black and gray come here, and then, there we go, still nothing. Then over here, uh, let's see, did change, yes. So that becomes, white becomes pure, and there we go. Then over here, uh, that is, those are pure. And those are there. And there we go. Okay. Yeah, I think the board design and layout and the, just everything, I think, works really, really well with this. Uh, even better than Teo, definitely. I agree with that. Um, all right. So, my turn. I'm first, because I'm first. So, what do we want to do? There are still no dice here, but all the dice are my oyster, so to speak. Uh, so, let's see. We are dark. We have none up there. Ugh. All right. Um, so, the game is going to take this action, which is going to take the five-value die. So if I want the five, I better take it now to be able to boost my happiness five, which gives me access to the green ones. But I'll be honest, the green ones are kind of eh. But to be able to get to the purple, you got to get to the green. Eh. Honestly, I want I did yeah. You know what? What if we took the four? I do have two papyrus. I have a papyrus and a gold. So that would give me four, which would get me into the green and get me to that, which then also would get me a scribe, which means I could take two scribes to then be able to do the Thoth action again. But then I would need papyrus. And if I wanted to boost my papyrus, I would probably have to come build a building there, which then drops me one happiness, which would drop me to the red. Okay. Well, there goes that idea. So I think, you know what, I will go ahead and take the Bastet action. I think, right? So let's see. That one, Hold on. I... I'm just debating whether or not to build a statue. Actually, I cannot because it would be for... Yep, we're going to stay on target. All right. So I will go ahead and take the five tainted die here. So that'll go there. It's going to cost me two papyrus. So one papyrus and a gold there. That's going to get me die value happiness. That's five. One, two, three, four, and two five there. And because it was a five, I get no scribes. Okay. All right. 
Okay, done. All right, so now the game is going to come over and take their uh, Thoth action. However, they cannot, as we already said, there's no dice here. So counterclockwise, that's this way. Then the highest value die will be the black four. So he will take the four. I'll just, yeah. Come on. There we go. Um, so he's going to gain four happiness. One, two, three, and four there. And a four, so he'll get a scribe. There we go. All right. Bot's done. My turn. Okay, the bot didn't get the one for the granite. I didn't think so, honestly, which should be one point for the bot then and uh, one scribe because it's on the five, six. So that was for the granite one there. So I don't, yeah, I think I screwed that up earlier. That's fair. Okay, good. All right. Well, I only have one scribe and to be able to take an Anubis action, which is to basically take a die from anywhere and do any action, but it doesn't count on your scales, <clears throat> you need two scribes. So I need another scribe. So to be able to do so, I would need to ideally do one of these, but I can't because my happiness is already maxed out. Okay, all right. So there goes that idea. The other action, option, I should say, is to maybe uh, build a statue over, oh, wait, I can't. There's only, there's already one built. So there's that. So the next available action that the bot is going to do is either the highest value brown die, which is going to be over here for happiness, uh, the basket, or they will do a Hathor action there. So we got a 50-50 shot on that. So do I want to take one of those dice from him? I only have one bread, so no. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hmm. You know what? Give me just one second. I want to look what that building action does. Uh, Uh, I got to look at the number up close, sorry. 12, P12. Perform a Horace God action to build a statue as if you'd taken a die value of one, two, or three, but you have to pay the cost. That's what I thought. Arr. Well, the problem is I don't have enough uh, granite to be able to take that bonus action. However... I could get two gold. Maybe we do that one instead. It'd be a pure die for one point. I would get the two gold, even if it's the wrong color. The other option is to come down here and lose one happiness, which wouldn't be the end of the world. And then I could boost production on one of them, as well as get some sort of resource. The question is, which one would it be papyrus? Probably to be able to do that. Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to stay on target. We're going to take the raw action. Okay. So let's walk through the raw action. All right. So I'm going to choose. Oh, there isn't there. Uh, I am not because I need a three or a four, and those are not threes and fours. Ah! All right, never mind. Okay. Five pure, two tank. Yes. Okay. Change of plans. We will do the Osiris action. 
And I will go ahead and take the five pure die, okay? So that balances my scales there. When I take a pure die, I gain a victory point. So that's one point for me. I will grab a building and it's a five. So it's either going to be papyrus or limestone and it will be papyrus. So I'm going to get two papyrus and I will get a bump on my production of two papyrus as well. So that goes up two and then two papyrus. I have a plan, I think. Now the game will also get one scribe and one victory point for me, his statue right there. Whee! All right. But I feel better about that. I think so. Okay. All right. Game's turn. Uh, check. Uh, yeah, game's turn. All right. So we will flip. Hey, there we go. So I'm moving to the right. So taking the, uh, the Hathor action now. So Hathor being here. So I'm going to take the five, obviously. Highest value die that's available. Uh, and we'll place a uh, building wherever it gets the most immediate points, which is going to be uh, in the four bread location, looks like. So right there, because pillar, it's going to get three more points for doing that. There. And then is going to get five population because uh, they took a five pip die. Okay. And yes, I will in a minute. I lose one. Thank you for that. And then uh, he's getting five population. One, two, three, four, five. Feel like I'm playing with Rainer. Okay. Done. And now we rotate. And we will recede. All right, so we will start at top. You know what those aren't? Threes and fours. Well, that'll do. All right, starting up top. So we have uh, the only ones that appear are ah, yellow and brown. All right. Everything else is tainted. A lot of high value pips up there. This one didn't change. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I'm right. There. Then we have, uh, let's see, tainted and pure. And over here we have didn't change. And over here we have pure and all tainted. There we go. All right, my turn. Yeah, the bot really is tough, Derek. Hey, what's up, ma? Okay. Well, we have papyrus now. We're in the green. Wow. I need, oh, I only have two papyrus. Okay, so I need more papyrus. We're going to, I think I only need to do this once the entire game. So I think what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to take this tainted die, so it's going to come over onto the tainted side, and I'm going to go ahead and get four papyrus for it. So this is the first time we've done a action with resource uh, to take resources, okay? So I 
get whatever the die value is, and because it's a yellow die, it is color coordinated with the type of resource. So if it were a brown die, it would be bread. If it were a white die, it'd be limestone, granite, et cetera, et cetera. So I get four. Now, if this were below four, let's say it were at three, one of these that it produced would come over onto the tainted side and would add one to the scale on the tainted side because you couldn't hold that many. So instead of that being nine, that would be 10 if this were at three because you always produce the die value. But as it is, I'm at four, so I actually get to keep all four and nothing else goes over onto the tainted side. It's not ideal, but I'm okay with it for now. All right? All right. So that was my action. So now the game will flip and see what he's going to do here. So the bot is going to move up and is going to take the raw action because landed there. So it goes up. So it's going to be the raw action. All right. So now You're going to choose the highest value die. If tied, it's going to take the uh, pure die. So obviously there are a bunch of sixes, so it's going to take the brown die because of the fact that that is the pure die. So it took a six, so it's going to take this tile, and I'm going to go ahead and refill it because the bot isn't going to cheat knowing and placing it where uh, is advantageous for it. Okay. All right, so it's going to score three points. All right, and he's going to score based on where he places this. So there are a couple of things for where he places this over here, okay? So whatever is going to score him the most points. So placing this here is going to score one point per building regardless of ownership. So, in other words, possibly right there. You're always going to keep the orientation as it was, so it will always be face up there. It'll score one point per edge, uh, regardless of the color, and then uh, it'll score three points because of the three point space over there, okay? So this is going to be the place that it's going to score the most points. So he's going to build it right there. We're going to put a pillar down. He never gets whatever is in the center. So he's going to get a point per building. So one, two, because of the intersection. He's going to get three points for taking that one there that shows three points. So he's now at five. It's on the edge. That's six. The end. So six points for the bot. Two, four, and six. I did explain what the goal of the game was, right? Think so. Okay. Okay. Done. Right, exactly, Shrey. It, uh, that one is get two resources if it's on the dark, but I get it regardless, remember. So, and that takes four limestone there. All right, so for my last magic trick now, I think I'm going to stay on target. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and take the Thoth action. Like I said, I'm going to lean into this because I have so much stuff that is Thoth related here. It just makes sense to me. Would lower left score more points over here? It would be one, two, three. It's still six. Oh, actually, it's tied. So, let me see. When tied, because he loses the second building then. Um... If tied, uh, break uh, ties for a space and row column with one of its houses. So I played it in the right spot. There you go. Okay. Good. All right. So I'm going to take the five Thoth on the pure side. So I'm only, I'm plus one to the good on that. That's okay. 
but it was a five, so I'm going to go ahead and discard three papyrus, okay? So there's three papyrus, and I'm going to choose, uh, I can choose the green, the red, or the beige area. I cannot mix and match, remember. Okay, we're going to do the red area. I'm going to take those two. That is 24. Reading the Anubis action one. As if you had spent two scribes. Yeah. I want the extra action. So I will take that one as well. Okay. There we go. Then that was a pure die, so I'm going to gain a point. And then it was a Thoth God action. That's going to be another two points. So that's three points for that there. And now I will also gain a Papyrus whenever I take that action. And Scribe and Gold is interchangeable. And my Blessing, I can spend one Happiness and one uh, Population, and I would take the opposite action as if uh, the die I took there uh, was there as well. Okay? I hear you, but I'm not doing a lot of building right now. Um, I'm going to use this probably one more time, but that's it. And it just didn't seem worth it to me. So, all right, so, all right, bot's turn. Here we go. Moving on up. All right, so going here. So because it is the papyrus, it will be the yellow, highest value yellow die. Double check, make sure that's right. If tied, but it's not. So it's going to be this yellow die there. All right. So took a yellow die, and that is for Horus. Oh, Horus, of course, of course. Of, oh, <clears throat> anyway. All right. So four is going to be for Ra. Well, easy enough. Oh, this is painful. Done. So, he built the statue for there. Okay. If it were already occupied, then it would go into tiebreakers for down here and other areas, but it's, it's a cow's opinion because it wasn't. It's moo. All right. So, now we are going into a map phase. Determine balance. As mentioned, I'm at 10 and 9, so I am at plus 1. The game for the solo bot is plus two. So therefore, I will go first. The bot, bot will go second. Okay, we will shuffle those and then we will go through the rest of the mop phase and scoring. Uh, check that. Yeah, we will, okay. So, um, It rotates, so now it's pointing at that. So we're going to have a scoring. Okay, so the arrow, you'll have to take my word, is pointed up there, okay? Oh, damn it, yes, he gets another scribe and another point, because I took a Thoth action, yes. Grrr. Okay. All right, so, in a moment. All right, okay, so uh, we need to, eh, hold on, score first before we uh, mess with the dice. So we're going to go ahead and do our first scoring. Here, okay. 
All right, so we're going to go ahead and score down here in the Osiris action or area, okay? Going to score three points for whoever has the majority in each of the given areas. So I have the majority there, they do, nobody there. Okay, easy enough. So it's going to be six points for the bot, three for me. If let's say this were mine and that were the bots, higher up has priority uh, for tiebreaker. So for this north, if you will. So, but as it is, it doesn't matter. So it's going to be six and three respectively. So six for them and three for me. Okay. Then we're going to go over to the temple complex and we're going to score uh, each building and statue is going to score one point respectively. So one, two, three, four, sorry, building and statue. So that'll be one, two, and one, two, and one. And then a pillar for each building and statue that belongs to the player in the same column and row. So this pillar is going to score two points, and this one will score one point for a total of three points. That makes sense, I hope, okay. Then we're going to score a number of statues built. Uh, let me double check for the solo bots. Yes, and it's happiness marker, okay. So the game has built one, two, three of its six statues. So that's going to be uh, six points for their statues. One, two, three, four, five, six. Wow. Wow. That's brutal. All right. Then uh, I, I have no statues built, so we can just skip my scoring. Then we're going to score where our happiness markers are. Happiness, not, uh, not population, mind you. Okay. So take a look at the triangles down here. And for every triangle, you're going to get uh, three points that it's reached. So I will get three and the bot will get three. Easy enough. Three and three. Then I, and only I, score this next uh, series of points, if applicable. If any of my markers are up here at the top row, I'm going to gain two points for each of them. As you can see, not so much. And then I got to pay upkeep. So I got to pay one bread for that. And those are cumulative. Okay. You lose three points for every bread not paid. Okay. Then we're going to remove this scoring marker from the board. And then we're going to go ahead and reseed. So these will come off the board or come off our boards as it were there. I'll go ahead and put out new dice and then remind me to fix this. Okay. Yeah. The statues are eating me alive for sure. All right. So we will do uh, Hathor there and then we will do two for Osiris. There we go. All right. So starting up top, didn't change, right? Did it? Oh, it did. Yeah, it did. Never mind. All right. So black and brown are unavailable for the game, at least. And then that is pure. Okay. Then over here, we have pure are yellow and brown. Everything else is tainted. Then here, did not change. Then here, tainted, and that is pure. And last but not least, we have there, and didn't change. There we go. Okay. I did spin it at the begin, at the beginning of that. 
Oh, thank you. I did not uh, refill the uh, card display. All right, good call. After my last action. All right. Oops, wrong one. Just do that. So what do we have? A blessing and two techs. I would have realized when I can't see the cards that I need. When you produce, get two scribes. Okay. A couple of techs now. When you perform an Anubis action, gain three points. And when producing resources, you may adjust the die value by up to two and gain one additional resource of the same type. Nice. Okay. Yeah. All right. And now we need to go ahead and change the bots stuff. So I will gather these up. Oh, hey, while we're waiting here. Peter, cheers, man. Thank you for the support. The bot does have endgame scoring. I'll get to it. Or I'll, I'll talk about it here in a minute. All right. And Victor says, for once, an ancient Egypt setting that is actually thematically deepish, for a Euro at least. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. That's shuffled-ish. Okay. So let's go ahead and get these back out. Then I'll go over the endgame scoring for the bot. And, I, you know, it's, it's subtle and, and uh, you know, whatever, but I like the fact that this even these are in a pyramid shape, which, again, trying to go with the theme here, right? I mean, and if you don't like the actual action of flipping this, you could, again, odd or even, right? Roll a die or one through three, four through six, whatever, et cetera, et cetera. So he's going to take the highest value yellow die at the beginning. So there. So if I want to do something over there, that'd be the time to do it, right? Okay. All right. So end game scoring for the bot. Uh, each blessing that it has scores two points. Um, oh, check that, check that, check that. Uh, if it had any cards, it also would have scored some points right now, but obviously he's not taking any actions that got it got him cards. Blessings, he would score two points and then discard them. And this is during a regular scoring. And technology, those are kept, but they score two points apiece. All right. Uh, if it's the end of the game, every decree is worth four points. Uh, ignoring everything about the card, just it gets four points. And every two scribes is worth a point. And if you're playing the harder difficulty, um, if you want, you could score it to where uh, every decree is eight points instead. Okay. Uh, how do I like this with bots compared to uh, uh, other players? It's tough, but it's kind of like playing against Rainer. So that's good, I guess, if you like pain. So there you go. <laughs> um, all right, so my turn. Oh, I need to choose uh, one of these first. Hmm. You know, a second scribe kind of seems pretty good right now because that would give me an Anubis action. If I need. I think so. I think I'm going to go ahead and take this one. So I'll just move it over here to show that I took it, and I will grab a scribe. All right, cool. Which is really gold, right? Because of that. And if I interchange it, okay. All right, so let's see. Can you stop that? There we go. Hmm. We have a bunch of papyrus, so 
That would only get us three. The six here is awfully tempting, but I know that's going to be there for the next turn if I want to do it here in a minute. Well, I know he's going to take this action, right? Or he's going to take that action on the two. Now, if I don't take the two, he's going. this gold is going to go away. And I was kind of planning on taking that two over there anyway. Um, I'm leaning towards doing this first. I don't have any bread, so I'm not taking that. So do I? That gives him another scribe and another point, doesn't it? But it would get me a gold, and it would get me another limestone, which I do like. Yep. I, oh, I think. I lose access to the green ones, though. Is that a big deal? Is that a big deal? Because next turn I'm going to be able to do both of those. I think that's okay. Jeremy says, take the tainted three. Do you mean this one or this one? I want the two because it's going to give me the gold, but also I'll be able to have that spot there, which would give me the extra three points. Or, or I could take the bread, which would then negate his tiebreaker there. The tainted three, I don't have the, uh, the granite up there to do, so you mean this one. I don't see a reason why I would take the three as opposed to the two. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Osiris action, which means he gets a scribe and a point. I don't know why I'm looking up there. That's where I'm at. There you go. Because Osiris is here. It's a six, so he gets one of each. So I'm taking the two... It is a pure two, so I will get one point for that. It's a point. And then I will take a building, which now it's going to cost me two bread. And I will actually go ahead and get a bread and bump on bread one, which I really don't care about, but I get that gold and it negates the three points there. So there and there, and I get a bread. Done. That'll work. Okay. Cool. All right. So now the game goes, and as we have established, going to take the highest value yellow die. So that's going to be the Hathor action. And the Hathor action, pretty simple. Whatever gets the most points from pillars. So he's going to take the pure four. So that will go there. Uh, okay, so going to grab a building. Whee! And... Huh. So no points from pillars can he build. Okay, so let's see. The tiebreakers then. If tied, pick randomly among... Um, so it can't. Okay. So let's see. Literally random. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it rolls a three, I will then roll again. 
and we'll determine between them. All right, it's two, so it's going to be there. Get zero points, and we'll get four on the population, which one, two. Oh, thank you, I do lose a, a one happiness, thank you. Um, a moment. This is Bastet, right? Yeah. Nope, oh, sorry, Hathor. Uh, there was also something, I believe, that if... I'm looking to see that if it were to get any higher on that, I don't... Nope, never mind. Okay. So, he maxed that out. Done. All right. Oh, did I move it down? <sighs> Thank you. Well done, guys. Appreciate it. All right. So, and now I'm not in green. Now I need happiness. Son of a. All right. Well. Actually, I think it's, yeah, I need the three papyrus, though. Oh, losing that one happiness really hurt. because there's still no threes and fours up there. So to be able to do that six, I need four limestone, and I wanted to be able to get that first. So how can I do that? So I want those three, which means I need three papyrus for that six, but I need to be in the green. So how can I gain one happiness first? How can I gain one happiness first? Spend two papyrus to do that, right? I have a gold, so that would drop me one short of what I want to be able to do, but I can use scry, aha! There it is. I think I figured it out. That works. I'm going to go ahead and do the Bastet action over here. So I'm going to take the one die. And that is on the tainted side. So there. I'm going to pay the two papyrus. There. My happiness is going to go up a whopping one, but I'm going to get two go uh, scribes. Interchangeable, right, for me? So I will grab two scribes, which also double as gold. And now I'm happy with that. Yep, that'll work. Good. All right, the bot goes. And moving straight to the right. Ra. Oh. oh, that hurts. Oh, that hurts. I didn't even look at that, and I should have. Damn it. All right. So whatever is going to get him the most points. So, uh, oh, that sucks. That's three points. 
Oh, that hurt so bad. Yeah. Oh. Glory to Rome, to me, for not paying attention to that. All right, so that's coming out here. Okay, so scores one point per building. So it could be any of these three rows there. One point per adjacent edge, regardless of color. So if I'm, so in other words, if he were to go like here, that would be another two points. Um, break ties in a space for a row and column with one of its houses. So it's then going to be here, here, or here. Oh, never mind. It's going to be in this spot right there. Okay. So he doesn't get the bonus for it, but it's going to be three points for uh, where he took the tile. He's going to be one point for adjacent edge, regardless of color. So that, that seems shady. That's four. And then one point uh, per building. So that's six points all day. Six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. All right. Yeah, that definitely was unfortunate, I think is a good way to put it. All right, so now we rotate. Yuck. Yuck. If I use the Thoth action with double action blessing. Double action blessing. Oh, this one? It says when taking the die, so I would argue that, oh, it happens beforehand. Yeah. Oh, I guess that's a... F uh, so if that's the... P hmm. Well, now it's less... Uh, I, I was going to use it to take that, but yeah, now I'm not going to. It would be beforehand, I would think, because it says whenever you... Uh, it says when taking a die... So before taking the action, I would say, um, oh, he does have the raw, and the raw is going to be one point because it's in the middle section. One more point. You guys are on the ball. Well done. All right. So two dice here. All those are going to be pure. So I'm just going to hook that up. And then two over in Horus. All right. So starting up top, that didn't change. And then we have pure and tainted. And then that's done. And then here is going to be pure. This goes there. Then here, uh, yellow and brown are pure. Everything else is tainted there. And that didn't change. Done. All right. Okay. Hey, Nathan. And you're a terrible human, Kushigra. Just saying. Okay. <laughs> All right. Give me just a second, y'all. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me grab some tea before I figure out what I'm going to do now. Man, that messed me up. Well, 
I was going to come and take three of these. I think I still do, but I don't know if I do any... I mean... So let's see, that's eight, so I would like a six tainted. No, it's gotta be a three or four tainted. So a three is four, and ouch. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. So if I were to take this, that's going to get me a papyrus and three points and three cards. I think it's too good to do, right? And if I grab... Which I have zero points on right now. But if I were to take this, this would grant me four limestone, which then I could use to be able to build another pillar. Is that important enough? Or I could use it to build statues, which... Statues over here might not be a terrible idea. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out the order in which to do things. Which, easier said than done right now. I'm going to go ahead and take this and figure it out here in a little bit. Maybe that's not the best way to do things, but I'm tired of trying to just figure it's not coming to me so it's going to be a six pure so i'm going to get two for the thoth action one for the pure die and uh one papyrus when i take that action so i would argue i i think i would have to pay one two and a gold so because scribes and gold are interchangeable so there's that then I'm going to get the papyrus back for that, and that's going to be three points there. The game is going to get one scribe there, okay? So now, I think I'm going to take, I know I'm, <sighs> yeah, I think I take these two for sure. So I'll take those two, which are going to be six points, plus now I have an auto adjust the die value up to two. This one allows me to interchange uh, granite and limestone. And this is nice because it gives me another, oh, you guys can't see that. Let's try that again. Let's move that over. There we go. This one. Unfortunately, I don't have any buildings built over on that side of things. So that kind of sucks. But if I were to produce one more time, and I just don't have enough actions, I feel like. I'm worried that... Uh, is it worth building these to get the extra three points? And it would take away stuff from him. I think maybe... Um, I think it might be worth it. But the limestone, I am going to have to produce at some point, I think. 
So maybe I do do that. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and take those three. And I do get another point for using gold and uh, scribes interchangeably, so there's that. So it's not over yet. I realize, hey, if a game ha gives you end of game points, right? Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. So I'm at 49. So I'm actually right here with just that one end game scoring card. So keep that in mind. Oh, I get the papyrus first so I can actually uh, exchange that for a scribe. Okay. Thanks, Shrey. All right, so that is my third one, the game's third one. Here we go. Moving to the right. So that's going to be uh, Thoth. Oh, well, he can't because there are no Thoth dice. Counterclockwise is this way. So he's going to grab a five here. Uh, no scribes, but five happiness. One, two, three, four, and five. He does not get any of these bonuses, by the way. Okay? All right. All right. So last action here. So the game for the end of the round, the mop phase, this is the third mop phase. He'll be at plus one. And he, so he's going to become the first player unless, unless I get a faith and I get a high value die. So what do we want to do? Now, hmm. do I want, what do we want to do? Ideally, build that, which I can do with the Anubis action. But the problem is I'm going to be negative or I'll be positive. Well, I'm going to go second. So would that be the end of the world if I ended up going second on each of these? Oh, I need to refill these before I decide. Sorry about that. There we go. All right. Thanks, Rocky. All right. So let's go ahead and throw a blessing out there. Basically the identical of what I just got since they're interchangeable to me now. And two technologies. When you perform a Hathor action, gain an additional two points per pillar. We don't want him to get that one. Sheesh. And when you take a Tainted Die to perform, you can spend a Scribe to also produce resources. What? When you take a Tainted Die to perform a God action, you spend a Scribe, or in my case a Gold or a Scribe, to also produce... Oh my God. That is so good. That is so good. Well, you know what? Is it, I think it's worth it at this point. Ah, uh, do I use the Anubis to, oh, but when I do, I drop down into the red. Oh, man, I cannot get it. Um, okay. Oh, hold on. No, yes, 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 yes. Here we go. Uh, if you take the white five for limestone and make it a four with your tech card, you'll go first. 
to get a bunch of limestone. That is an option, okay? Here's another option. I could go second. No, it still doesn't help me because I lose, yeah. Oh, that would give me a ton of limestone. I'd be able to build a ton of pillars. Is it worth it though? Um, that's a really interesting idea though, Shrey. If you take the five limestone, make it a four, no, that's eight to one. No, 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 no. That wouldn't work. Now, I don't think there's a way to go first. Oh, maybe there is. Okay. Let we're going to go ahead and take a raw action. Oops. All right. Yep. So I can treat any die. So I'll go ahead and treat that one as a pure two. But I have a, whenever I take a God action, I can adjust it. So I'm going to change that to a four. So that's a pure die, which is worth one point. I'm going to take that tile here. So this four goes onto the purity side. That's fine. So I'm going to get two points for this. Hmm. So where do I put it? And that's going to cost me three limestone and a granite. Beige and red. You know what? Let's make it four. Let's make it four tainted. And I'm going to go back one, my one point. Because I'm going to go ahead and build it right here. And I'm going to get three faith. That'll be worth one point, two points, three points for that. So that's three points for matching all of that. I'm going to get the three faith and I'm going to get the two gold because I have the technology that just says I always get that. That'll work. Done. And now, with my three faith, I will be at eight to eight. Oh, the surplus limestone. Yeah, I see that. Right. But I hear you. All right. So the game's turn now. The bot will go, let's see, to the right. All right. So taking the uh, Osiris action. All right, so coming down here for the Osiris action. So that is going to be a tainted six it's going to take. 
So it's gray, so it will choose the district that contains the fewest buildings. So it's going to choose this one and right there. Okay, all right. So now it's going to be a MOT phase. All right, so determine balance. I am perfectly balanced. And the game, I think I said it will be plus one. Yes, plus one. So I will be there. The game will be there. So therefore, there, I stay in first. All right. And I did not rotate, did I? No, I did not. All right. For the raw, ah, yes. And he gets a point for the raw statue. And I forgot to refill it. So that will go over. And there we go. Good call. And he did this. Also, so Osiris, he will get another point and another scribe. God, killing me, Smalls. All right, good. All right, so we will clear. Should have one, two. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Whew. All right. Throw these back in the bag. Yeah, I know, right? They well, no. They, I, I would like to say uh, that they they want me to play it correctly, but they they also chose uh, new cards. All right. Yeah, I need to refill first, but yes. So, two each. We'll start up top. And then on the bottom. There. And I need to uh, also redetermine uh, the bot's pyramid. So, okay. So, tainted are black and pure are brown. There, uh, white, good. Done. 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 All right. Oh, apparently I should have two more points. Thank you, Shrey. At least somebody's looking out for me. I appreciate it. All right, cool. All right. Um, so we need to shuffle these. Okay, and then I need to choose one of those, which now I'm going to choose the two, which will give me one happiness. There. And the order of that doesn't matter at that point. Okay. Oh, here, while I'm shuffling. What are you guys thinking of this so far? Uh... For those that weren't with us for the uh, multiplayer, what do you think of the solo? And for those of y'all that were being able to compare and contrast, I'm curious how you guys are enjoying the solo 
as well as, uh, well, yeah, and compare and contrast with the multiplayer. Let me know. I'm curious. All right. So now the bot doing their thing. Let's go. And David is on vacation, I think, right now, and so that's why I'm pretty sure he's not, why he's not with us. So, hey, Gaurav. All right, so we're up first, and it's our action, and I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing, but let me double check. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm doing that. That one and that one. And maybe that. Yep. Oh, because I... Ooh. Oh, maybe we're not. Hold on. Because I already built that. So if I were to take, I don't have enough bread, right. Oh, I don't have papyrus. Oh, lordy. But I can produce with that. So I have two gold and a scribe, which would be that. I would be able to grab three of those. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to take the five pure. So whenever I take a pure and the thoth, that's going to be a total of three points. So three points there. I will pay the one papyrus that I do get, and I will pay a scribe and a gold, and that will get me one more point because of interchanging the scribe and the gold. Yep. So that's going to, then I need to pay three papyrus. Well, I already paid that. Sorry. So then I'm going to go ahead and choose three cards. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to choose those three. Because I'm going to get two pure dice, pay two scribes. And then I'll be able to get a total of four limestone and four granite. I think that's the right thing. Uh, yeah, I think so. But the question is, I know I'm going to build one more building, which would be worth three points. Is it worth building more. I don't think so. I think I'm going to stick with those three. And these are, whenever I perform a Hathor action, score two more points per pillar. And this one, whenever I take a Tainted Die, perform a God action, you can spend a Scribe, also produce resources. I'll go ahead and there and there. Yep, I like that. Okay, so the game now is going to take the raw action. That's That one's pretty obvious there. Um, oh, hold on. That was here. So that means the game is going to get one scribe for me doing that for him. God, that is just relentless, isn't it? Now he's taking the raw action, and raw is going to be one point for them taking the action up here. It's going to take the six tainted die up there. And because it was a six, it's going to take that one, which is going to be three points. That's the one they took. That's the one it's going there. That is a Osiris action on the three level. Ah, that'll do. That's, that's going to be me. 
That works out really, really well. Okay? Yeah, I'm happy about that. Okay, so he's going to build this one. So that is three points. And whatever is going to get him the most points, right? All right. So, one point per building regardless of ownership. So it's going to, uh, so it's going to be one point no matter where I put it out there for that. One per edge, that would be two points, and then potentially two points. That's probably only, it's going to be two, two, or two. And if uh, it would score the same amount of victory points in a space, row, or column with one of its houses. Which it's going to score, oh, there it is. It's going to be up here. It'll be one point for the building. It'll be two, three points for the edges, regardless of color. And then three points where it took it from for a total of six. So six points. One, two, three, four, five, and six. I already gave it its points for the, or its uh, point for that. All right, game's done. All right, I had a plan. Don't screw this up. What was it? Oh, I need new buildings. Damn it. Or new cards. Hold on. All right. When performing a Bastet or Hathor, you don't pay its, uh... huh. Don't pay its cost for either of those. Okay. All right. I already gave it its one, Ra, before I took the action. When performing a Bastet, get two points, a, ha a population, and a happy. Really? Oh my. When you produce bread, gain two victory points, and then at the end of the game, you don't pay upkeep. Eh, all right. I'm pretty sure I gave it its one for raw. But if you guys say I didn't, I'm 99% I'm sure, but I will defer to you guys, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Somebody can go back and double check it. All right. Okay. I am pretty sure. Mm. If I took that tainted six, I would be able to produce. Hmm, that's slick. I like that. All right. Okay, I did give him the points. Thank you. That goes back one. That, and then I would get... I don't know that I'm going to take the Bastet action anymore. And whenever you... I believe Blessings, you can only use one per turn, or can you use multiple? I need to double check that. Cuz this this is going to be uh this is going to be important. I'm sure it says it somewhere in here. Let's see. Uh you may activate multiple blessings at once. All right. Well. Wow. Okay. Oh. Oh, really? Okay. All right. So we are going to take the raw action. So the raw action is going to get him one point. I'm giving him his points now. There. I'm going to take the tainted six. All right. So now, because I use the tainted die, We're going to, <sighs> I 
Oh, yeah. Okay. Because I use the tainted die, I'm going to spend a scribe. Check that. I'm going to spend a gold, which works as a scribe. So therefore, I'm going to score one point for that. There. Then, when you take a tainted, tainted die uh, and perform a god action, you can spend one scribe to also produce resources. I'm going to produce Well, I took a black die, so it's going to be two limestone. I'm sorry, two, uh, two granite. But then, I'm going to use this card and this card when I produce to gain four more granite and four limestone. And those are not limited to that number right there. But I also, because I'm producing six granite, I'm going to get four on the tainted side. So with that said, I'm gonna change that to a five, which I can do so freely there. So I'm actually only gonna take one extra, or uh, three tainted, and I get all of those resources as well. And those two cards go away. Okay, so now the question is, that's going to be an Osiris action as well. I'm going to spend four limestone to be able to take the action, and I'm going to be using one of these as a granite, which is going to be one additional point. There. And now, now that we've paid for everything, now let's actually take the action, shall we? So it's going to be the raw action. So. Pay, it was a uh, five die, so it's still going to be this one. And don't worry, I'm not going to cheat. And I just don't want to forget to fill that. All right. So there's that. So now, where do we put it? What do we want? It is blue and beige. The papyrus isn't a bad idea. Oh, I forgot to put one of his pillars on there. Uh, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and take the papyrus there. So that's three. That's four for matching the color. Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's a fair point. I could put it on the two bread. Well, you're saying over here, honestly, the two papyrus? Oh, no, so I could build the build. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. So if I were to build it there instead, I see what you're saying. It's a good call, Shrey. So let me make sure I score this right. This is the hardest one for me to remember how to score. So I get one point per building, so that's going to be one because it's his building right there. It doesn't matter the owner. And then no, 
one point for every edge that matches, which is zero, so that's one. And then whatever I get for that, which is two bread, so it's gonna be one point and two bread. There, and then, because I have the technology that allows me to do whatever is on there, so I will take an Osiris action at the three value, Osiris being down here. So I'm going to go down one happiness here, and it's gotta be at the three level. It's going to be right here. So my limestone and granite each go up one, and I get a limestone for that. There, there. That was worth it though. Okay. I think that's it. The only other question is whether or not I wanted to use that to lose one more happiness and that to be able to, I don't. That's it, done. It's my second action. Oh, and three for where it came from. Thank you. One, two, and three. It's closer than I think it looks. I think. We'll see, though. All right. So the game's turn. So either going to take this action or this action. <laughs> yeah, all right. Here we go. Moving to the right. So it's going to be Thoth. So here, he's going to choose this is his first Thoth action. Let's see. All right, so he's taking the two. Oop. There we go. He takes cards, uh, decrees if possible which can. He takes a leftmost if possible. Uh, selects from the highest segment. So he's in purple, so it will be these two decrees. So he's going to choose that one there, uh, the leftmost. Okay. Thankfully, he doesn't score it. Well, he scores four points, but that's it, right? All right. And now... New decree. See if this changes it. Pay two. Oh, oh, oh my God. Pay two gold to score another decree a second time. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one, twenty-four, twenty-seven, thirty points. But I have to get both of those up there. That may have just changed what the hell I'm going to do. Yup. <laughs> we were going to do it anyways. All right. We're going to take a Hathor action next. Uh, I think that's a no brainer for me. So I'm going to take the pure die. It's going to turn into a four. There, okay. So that's now nine to eight because we have the three there, okay. So that is a four. I'm going to pay the three bread that I have here, one, two, and three bread, to go ahead and build a house right here. I'm going to get one of everything that's up there, which is a papyrus, a limestone, and a uh, granite right there. Oh, hey, David. All right. You're right. Hold on. He gets one there, and he gets another scribe. There. OK. 
Okay, that was for this action earlier. Okay, so getting back to this, sorry, I got my, uh, got my resources, then I'm going to get uh, three points for every pillar uh, that is mine in that column. That's gonna be three, six points, six to 47 there. And then that was gonna be four, so that's going to be four population. One, two, three, and four. There we go. All right. Whew. All right, bot's turn. Moving on right. Oops. All right, that is going to be a Bastet action. Oh, you suck so bad. Glory to Rome. I will look at that here in a minute. Golly. Again, for not paying attention, Edward. And do I have a technology? It gives me extra points. Uh, when you raise a pillar, you always get to activate it. I'm looking. No. That is there. No. Now that is whenever you perform a Hathor God action. You gain two more points per pillar. Check that out. One, two, three, and four. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. We got him. Good call, Shrey. All right. All right. Well, he's taking that. So he gets five happiness. He pegs that. Which is what I was going to do this turn. Okay. I have to get that. If I did the Osiris action right now, I think that's what we do. I'm sorry, not Osiris, uh, Anubis action. So I'm gonna spend two scribes and I will go ahead and grab this five. Now, because it's an Anubis action, all right, That's gonna go there, and it doesn't go onto the scales, so now it's nine to eight, I'm happy with that. And then, that's gonna be here, I'm gonna pay the two papyrus, that's one and a scribe. And then, one, two, three, four, five, now I have access to those. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, so now the map phase. I'm at minus one, the game is at positive one. And if tied, he has the tiebreaker, so he's gonna go first, because his onk value has a permanent onk of four. Uh, all right. So now we will clear these. Refill. Did I? Oh, he hasn't taken his action yet. <sighs> Check that. And I get one more point. Thank you, David. All right, so he gets one more. I forgot because I was going first. So. And moving on up. Just got excited, sorry. It happens, it happens. Another Osiris. 
that's going to be taking the four to there, so there. So he is going to get one more point and one more scribe there. And that was a black. Oh, God, what number was that? What die did I just take, guys? Ah, I think it was a black four. I think it was. I think so. Okay, I think that's the one. Thought it was a black four. Double check, let me know. Please. And I already gave him his point and everything for that. Okay. Assuming that was right. There. That's his fourth action. It was. All right, cool. Good. Thank you. Did I mess something up here? Did I forget to put out dice somewhere? I feel like I did. I totally forgot something somewhere. Because there are too many dice in this bag. Four, eight, yeah. I forgot to put out dice at one point. Oh no. Well, you know what? That ship has sailed. So we're just gonna play it as is from here. So it'll be two there. Oh, that's frustrating. Oh, okay. No, right. Okay. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's just a brain cramp, right? There we go. And then there should be there should be four dice left in here and there's eight. Right. So the mop phase, that's done. So we already figured out the turn order. So turn order is done there. Nobody has any faith tokens. Rotated. And then go around. All right. I feel like I'm short four dice out there, but... All right, so... That goes there, 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 yeah, see I messed something up, I, you know what, I'm, we're just going to play it as is, I'm not going to bother putting them out, that's alright, it's not the end of the world. It happens. There, there, and... Good. Oh, okay, that'll work. Add one to all the others to kind of, All right, that'll work. So here we go. So we'll start up top. That'll work. There. There. Yeah, that was terrible. There we go. All right. And last but not least, bot pyramid for the final time.
It happens. It's still cheating. <laughs> Now, see, cheating uh, infers that uh, you did it on purpose. Pretty sure I didn't. So, that's all right. It happens. This is what happens when you're running 14 cameras doing everything and, ah, what can you do? Here's the nice thing. You guys will stick. Now you see where the tricky part is. Do as I say, not as I do, right? There we go. All right, let's go. Okay, here we go. Kind of appropriate that Ra ends up on top, right? All right. So the game starts. Oh, I have to choose one. Uh, the game will choose. Hold on. First and foremost, we will use the die that's out of the game. Uh, that'll be even and odd. Even. So choose and ascribe. I guess I will choose the gold. Okay, done. All right, so choosing the highest value brown die. Oh, all the new dice were for me. That's funny. That's funny. What's up, Sergio? All right, so choosing the highest value brown die that's available to them. Okay, so there is a brown three, a brown three, not available. But when uh, tied, We'll go for where he has a statue, so it's going to go up north for Ra. That's going to be one victory point for him, for the statue. All right, so building the brown three, which will be this one, which is going to be two points. Yeah. All right. And where is he going to build this? I'm pretty sure that it's going to go right there, which is going to be five points total. Because two for the edges, regardless of color. Two for taking it and one for the building. Yeah, that's going to be the most points he can get. That's going to be five for the bot. Have a good one, Kushagra. Oh. There we go. All right, so five points for the bot. One, two, three, four, five, and I already gave him his point and, or I'm sorry, yeah, his point for that. Done. Okay. So now opposite sides and that four, what tile number is that? That is number six. Oh, yeah, I guess so. So, he'd, okay. Yeah, you're right. Top left, top right. Uh, with one of its houses. So, no, it's still tied. Not adjacent to the temple complex. And then pick randomly at that point, right? So, okay. It'll be there or there. It doesn't matter. It's going to be six points. So that'll be odd. That'll be even. Even it is. So instead of there, good call. We'll go there. So it's one more point for the bot. There we go. All right, cool. All right. Hey, before you play, is that Monica? Hi. 
All right, that goes away. Cool. And what was I? Oh, shoot. I forgot what number that was now. Six. And six. Score one additional victory point per building belonging to any player in the same row and column. Eh. Eh. All right. All right. Well, I need I need papyrus for sure. So, and I don't think it might it's worth building any statues. I can get, in theory, two papyrus over here, but that gives him points. Or, you know what, I want, f oh, these should have cleared off also. Uh, I think I want four papyrus, actually, specifically. Oh, wait a minute. If I take a yellow die that's tainted, here, <laughs> um, which I could do this. I could use this as a tainted die there to be able to get a statue and be able to produce it. I might as well get a statue, right? So what's he going to do? He's going to take the highest value white one there or that action, which doesn't have a statue yet. But it's going to have to be four, so it's going to be yeah. I'm going to use this unavailable four to take the Horus action, and I'm going to use it as a tainted four. And oh, I don't. Ah, I will use my gold as a scribe, which will get me one victory point. And then I'm going to produce four papyrus for that because of my technologies there. Yep, that'll work. And that will build me a statue with four of any of these white and black. So the limestone and the granite. So that will get me one more point for interchanging those. And I will go ahead and build it. Which one? There, there, or up there. Uh... I mean, I think I'll build it there, actually. I'll get the gold for that. Then, when I build it there, I'm going to be able to score three points for my pillar there. One, two, three. That works. The top of Cyrus. To be able to produce to get my papyrus, I'm going to get the gold. Don't worry, relax, Shrey. Relax. I'm going to get my gold. So that's done. Yeah. That'll work. Done. 
His second action. Because I need Papyrus to be able to get... Mm. Moving up, taking a Hathor action. So that's going to be the black six, tainted, there. So it's going to be nothing on the population there. Uh, let me go and grab this. All right. Most immediate points for its pillars. All right. So, uh, looks like it's going to be that one or that one, either or. And if tied, pick randomly. All right, let's roll. Odd, even. Even it is. That goes there. Done. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so, Brian. I think this actually is is uh, a well. Ask me that at the end, and I will. I'll be able to give my uh, input. All right. So now I need a papyrus. I got it. I want both of those, so I need a three or a four. So I will take that four as a pure four. All right, so I'm going to take this four as a pure four. So we're taking the raw action. And per turn, so I'm going to interchange these. That's going to be worth one more point because I'm going to then take that tile, that will slide over. Hmm, where was that? All right. So that's gonna be two points. Huh. Papyrus, doesn't matter. Hmm. I guess. Could go there. So it's going to be two points. Then So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because of that. So eight, I think, for that. Plus I get to do what's on the middle because I have the technology that allows me to do it. Two, four, six, eight, and let me read that one again. That was number six, I believe. Uh, score one additional victory point per building belonging to any player in the same column and row. So one, two, two more points. There, done. Hey, John. I think I did that right. I moved the wrong thing. Uh, it should be up here. There we go. All right, his turn.
Moving to the right. Highest value black die. Highest value black die is the two, looks like. And I just built up here that is raw. He should have gotten one victory point for that. And now he's going to get another one for his action. So he's going to build that up there for the raw action. So that. And it's going to be six points. We already established right there. There. So we get six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. There we go. Uh, all right. So now. Oh, I'm short a couple resources. So I need, damn it, I need three. I know, so I'm safe to be able to do what I need to do. Can I afford to take resources this turn? I can't. Oh no. I need more resources. Woo wee. Oh, there it is. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right. So here we go. We are going to play, uh, take the Thoth action, which means he is going to get uh, one scribe for that. Here. I'm going to use this one as a pure three. There. So that's going to come over here. So a pure three is going to get me three victory points. three, and a papyrus, yeah, just making sure, okay, so three points. And I need to spend two papyrus to take that as the three, which is going to get me two. And it's going to be these two right here, since we're now up into the blue. Okay. So pay two gold to score another decree a second time. And before scoring, perform any one action as if it had any die value and without paying its cost. Okay, done. Oh, oh no. How did nobody point this out to me? Oh no. That's the same symbol. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, glory to Rome on that. So maybe I don't take those.
Oh, that's brutal. Well, okay. So as was pointed out, I do need bread. So I will, hmm. actually, I think what I'm going to do instead, oh, that was brutal. I think what I'm going to do is do this so that when playing a blessing, you gain a gold. There's my second gold. And then I might as well go ahead and take one extra action right there at the end. So I will take those two. And then I will refill these three victory points for every leftover scribe. Please, God, don't let him get that. And uh, <laughs> uh, when you receive a Horus bonus from a statue, gain a granite. Done. All right. His final action here. All right. Here we go. Oops. Here we go. All right. Taking a Horus action. Okay. A horse, a horse, a horse, a horse. All right. So uh, if tied, so that is a three value die. If tied, take uh, pure if possible. If not, random. So even is gray, odd is brown. Gray. So I'll take the gray three. All right, and he will build a statue right there. There's the three right there. Okay, done. All right, so I can do two things with that blessing, which will gain me a gold. So the question is, what do I want to do, right? Um, but I have no bread, so oof, I do have, uh, ha, 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 ha. Oh, I totally messed this up. Allow me a tiny mulligan, and instead of playing that, since I'm not going to be able to, there, I'm going to take the, when producing resources, you take the action twice. So I'll just go ahead and... That'll put another blessing out there. When performing a Bastet or Hathor action, do not pay its cost. I will... Produce with this brown three, and that will be tainted. Uh, sorry, yeah, tainted. And that'll give me uh, six bread. Producing it twice, done. Not a terribly exciting last action, I realize, but There. All right. So now, before we go into final scoring, I get to perform any one action as if it had a die value, anything we want. So. Yep. 
We're going to go and take a raw action. And the raw action will give him one scribe, I believe. No, nope, victory point. So it gives him one point. Thanks, Jeremy. I'm going to go ahead and build that one right there. Any value, I don't have to pay for it, nothing. I just get to do it. So I'll take that one. And... Let's see, it is red and green, does it matter? For buildings... I guess I will place it right there. It doesn't match any colors, but I still think that's all right. Two papyrus, I don't think will matter. The two gold, well, the two gold doesn't matter now, does it? I forgot. Yeah. Oh well, I'll get my two gold there. Yeah, mistakes have been made. That's all right. So that'll be uh, one point, two points. Well, if the gold doesn't matter. Screw it. I already did it. Two points done and put a pillar on it. Done. All right. So now finish uh, regular scoring. So here we go. Osiris first. I get three. I get six. I get nine. He gets three because highest up when tied. So I'll get nine, he gets three. One, two, three, and nine is 82. Uh, and to be clear, I'm balanced. He's at plus one. I don't think it matters though. Now the temple complex. So Hathor, here we go. Each building scores a point and a pillar scores for each building and statue in the same row and column. So for every building and statue for him, one, two, three, four, then it's going to be five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No. Nope. Try this again. Buildings. One, two, three, four. He scores four for that. One, two, three, four. Then a pillar. Yeah, no, I had it right. So for we'll go the here, then here. So four, five, six, seven. So seven more points. I did have it right. Seven, two, and five. Then for me, we're looking at one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine to ninety one. Okay, and now happiness. <laughs> I'm going to score, uh, let's see, it's three points per there. So that's six. He gets fifteen. I get six. He gets 15, five and back to where we started. Then statues, I'm gonna get one point for my statue. He built four of his statues, so that's gonna be 10 more points for him there. And now on my player board, I get zero because nothing made it up here. I'm going to owe my three bread, which I have plenty of, there. Done. And if I'd made it up to here, I would have scored some amount of points as well, okay? 
Uh, that's a good question about that for turn order. I'm not sure. Give me a second. Only first pays that. So nice. Okay. So as you can see right here, because I end up in first in turn order, I will get three points for that. Second place is only in a three and four player game. So that'd be three points. I guess it does matter. One, two, and three. We've rounded the corner. All right. So now for end game scoring, now for him, each decree is worth four points and every two scribes is worth one point. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It doesn't say to round, so he gets ten points for that. 130. And for me, uh, I took my bonus. I'm going to score three points for every technology that I have. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30. Just going to leave that there for a minute. And there we have it. Takano. Takano. Obelisk of the sun. There we go. It's never in doubt. There may have been some, I mean, obviously I forgot to reload dice at some point, so big asterisk, I understand. But uh, yeah, oh man, that was good. That was really good, I really enjoyed that. Now, I know I said this is sponsor, I'll be honest, so they're not paying me for this. The only reason I said this one was sponsored because I didn't want it to look weird that the multiplayer was sponsored and this one wasn't. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so there you go, okay. Uh, yeah, that was pretty cool. Like I said, I mean, I, mistakes are made, but it's a, ultimately what I remember when it comes to a solo game is the words of Mark Herman that he told me. You know what, as long as you're not actively trying to cheat the game mechanisms in the bot, if you will, then mistakes are gonna be made. You're the only one. And God, how many times did I screw things up that you guys in the peanut gallery caught? I imagine if you guys are at home, I, I, I don't know anybody that's played a solo game perfect, you know, uh, of any considerable weight. Um, it happens. So mistakes are made, but you know what? In the end, as long as you do your due diligence and try to get it right, so be it, right? I think that's fine. But yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Did I like this better solo or multiplayer? By default, I prefer multiplayer. Just that's always going to be my, my go-to on this. Uh, most anything, unless it's a game designed to be played solo. Uh, but do I feel like I got a, a rewarding experience playing it solo? Absolutely. And the bot's ruthless, man. This is this was rough. Um, and rough, I don't mean that the bot, the way the bot, just, it's a tough player. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So, I think really well done by David uh, and Danielle on designing the game. And I assume it was David that did the solo bot on this. It's brutal. Uh, but awesome at the same time, right? Which is what you want out of a solo 
you guys saw the uh, the multiplayer previously, or if not, you can go watch that. And I think, I'll be honest, I think the games play out similarly between the difficulty of weighing your decisions and everything. So that's a good thing. The only thing that is a little bit different uh, on this one is, obviously, you, you can foresee what other players are going to do to a point, right? Whereas in this, you very much can. You know it's a 50-50 shot. It's either going to move up this way or it's going to move to the right that way. Um, so, so it's a little bit more controllable, I think. I, you can't control the 50-50 outcome, I understand. But what I'm saying is you can, you can weigh how important something is. Oh, I desperately, I can't take the risk of the bot doing this, so therefore I do it. Whereas in a multiplayer game, you have, you know, it's less scripted. It's not a 50-50 shot on whether or not somebody's going to do something, right? Um, yeah, if the bot's not difficult, why well, have one? Exactly, Brian. I, I, I think that sums it up pretty, pretty well. Uh, okay, Shrey says, uh, solo mode is David Turtsy with Nick Shaw. So, well done on that, legitimately. Um... All right, uh, so Genway, how do you think this compares to Zolkin, Teotihuacan, and Trismegistus? Personally, of those, uh, of these four, right, the, the, the four T games, if you will, um, I would put, I haven't played this one enough, but I would put Zolkin and this probably in the top tier, Teotihuacan just one step below that, and Trismegistus, maybe a couple notches below that one. Um, just because the iconography on Trismegistus was a little tough for me. Um, and I think that this is a step up in, in, in my enjoyment of, uh, of the T games. Uh, above Teo, just because, and I mentioned this during the multiplayer playthrough, and I'll, I'll kind of run you guys through why, and I mentioned this then, but... Like, when you're talking about the Bastet action, right, which is this stuff down here, it's this stuff down here. When you're talking about the Osiris action, it is that. You know, I'm not having to look here and then having to look there and look there, which you do a little bit more in Teo. I thoroughly enjoyed Teo, but I feel like this is just an evolution of that, and I feel in a good way. It, they're completely different games, but you can see the lineage, is what I'm saying. The one exception to that rule is the Ra and Hathor. Basically, you're looking at this part of the board, right? Because you're looking at everything there, and then you have to come back for the scoring stuff for it here when you place it there. Whereas when you're doing the Hathor action, it's just all right here. But even so, you see what I'm saying? It's all, you know, your player board in all in one area, and it just... To me, it just, it seems simple, but it's just a, it's just a cleaner way to look at it, and it offloads some of the brain burn that doesn't help the game. You know what I mean? Uh, like, it doesn't make the decisions any easier. It just offloads some of the brain burn that you had to have for upkeep stuff that that's not here as much. And now it's just, okay, trying to figure out what the best decisions are uh, to make. So I can't really, I can't really um, emphasize that enough that I think it just feels like an evolution in the design in a good way. Uh, but there should be, right? There should be a stepping up right, as the designs go, plus obviously having David's input on this as opposed to just being a uh, Danielle Tassini game. Um, I would put the, yeah, I would put this up there with, uh, with Zolkin. I think Zolkin is fantastic. Uh, although, I, I, if you said, hey, do you want to play Zolkin, you know, uh, Teotihuacan or Tekenu, I'd be like, yes. The answer would be yes. A little less so on Trismegistus. Um, 
Is it possible to play with multiple bots? No, but I don't know that you need to. At least, it's not in the rules. Uh, to Watson sue you. Uh, I haven't played it yet, so I can't speak to it. I know I have a copy coming, well, before you guys, so I'll be able to stream it. So I haven't played it yet, so to be determined on that one, I can't speak to it. Uh, so, uh, Brian asked earlier if it seems bloated or overwrought. I don't think so. If you enjoy Teotihuacan, I think this is Teotihuacan and a step better just because of that offloading of the, ha wait, I have to look here, I have to remember that, I gotta do all that. Whereas everything is right here on the board, reminder-wise. Now, that's not necessarily the case with the bot. You still gotta go through, unless you have it you know, memorized, which I do not, and whatever. Um, that is one thing that I wish the game had, was like a, uh, one of the little um, player aids for the bot. That would have been nice. Not going to lie. That would have been good. Uh, but yeah, I think this is a step up um, as far as, oh, I, I'd put it on par with Teotihuacan uh, as far as weight rating on that. Uh, it's definitely a step up for medium because if Rococo is the quintessential midweight game, this is definitely a step up from that. So I'd say medium heavy. I think so. Um, do I feel like it's bloated or overwrought? No, but again, I like complex Euros and both Danielle Tassini and David Terzi make those type of games. I think this is uh, easier, you know, as far as that goes than like a Lacerda game, but I also really enjoy most of his games as well. So, um, is this as clean as the quote-unquote classic Euros of the 90s? No, but this is, I don't feel like there's anything here that should have been taking that, taken out. I'm perfectly fine with this, okay? The, the hardest thing, as you guys saw, for me is to remember putting out the dice. But again, remember, if you're playing multiplayer or whatever, or you, or you follow the everything on the back there, the player aid back there, then you won't make that mistake. It happens. Um, let's see, what else? It was based on what I perceived to be fiddly scoring and interaction during the individual steps. No, nah, I don't think so. I think this is I don't find it fiddly. The hardest thing, honestly, um, and the iconography is fine, but I still struggle with the scoring of Ra and Hathor whenever you take the actions. But when t it, 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 nobody else seems to have that problem in our group. It's just this guy. So it's just a me problem. Rainer has it down fine. Shrey has it down fine. Everybody else has it down fine, except for this guy. It happens. So there we go. Any production comments? Um... Yeah, like I said, I wish they had one of these for the solo bot, right? Have it double-sided for the solo bot, and that way you could use two of them to have them laid out to where you're not having to flip. That would have been nice. Uh, I'm sure somebody is going to produce one on BGG and put it out there. So that's a nitpick. Um, like, I'm trying to... Uh, the hardest thing for me, there is no way you guys are going to be able to see this. So you know what? I will... Go ahead and show you guys this up here. Oh, right. Okay. Hold on. I'll move it over there. Fine. Okay. That is a small number to be, a, and it's just for reference. Uh, I have to use my glasses. That I can read because I have it zoomed in super huge on the screen. Um, but again, I'm nitpicking. Uh, the component quality is good. Um, this hasn't been a problem. Um, yes, you can knock it over, uh, but you shouldn't do anything that, that does that, right? I, I mean, there's no reason to do so. Um, and now I can't get it back in the hole. Comments to yourself. There we go. Uh, 
No, I'm 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 pretty happy with the uh, production quality of it. That these aren't double si or double thickness, mm, uh, dual layer, but they don't need to be because the punch outs here keep all of that in there, and there's no reason to have anything else. No, other than that, no. There's I'm really happy with the production quality. Plus, like I said, you guys are gonna enjoy painting that for those painters out there, right? So. Just plastic, but there you go. Do you need to have it out there? No. I mean, then you have a hole in it. But And this is double-sided, so if you have it memorized which uh, where the dice go and everything and you want it just cleaner, you can have it out like that, or you keep it on the colors. Again, remember, these are not part of the game, so on and so forth. All right? Uh... Yeah, no, I, I, I legitimately, just having a, a solo player, player aid would have been great. That's literally my only complaint about this. So there you go. All right, cool. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, like Jess just said, if you guys enjoy it, leave a thumb. I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing. I would appreciate it. Join the herd. Uh, support the show, certainly. Definitely would appreciate that as well. You can go to pledgehc.com. Other than that, I will be back, uh, let's see, today's Wednesday. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm doing the uh, July monthly challenge for roads and boats. And then Girl Stampede on Friday. And I thought there was something on Saturday, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. So check the schedule. Go back to the channel. They're all laid out there. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Stay safe. Wear your masks. Social distance. Be smart. Be respectful to one another. Be kind. And I'll see you guys tomorrow, 3 p.m. Take care, everybody.